Take your Bibles and turn with me to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. I'll be reading verses 7 through 13. I was reading in one of Charles Finney's books, which I think is good reading for everybody. But he was talking about, you know, when we become Christians, when we get saved, he was comparing it to a marriage, a husband and wife. And he was saying that when we get saved, the reputation of the Lord Jesus Christ is given to us. Have you ever thought about that? What a tremendous thing that is for us to think about tonight, that the reputation uh, of the bridegroom is given to us like a uh, a, a woman, uh, a bride, takes the name of her husband, and his reputation is transferred to her. And, you know, if it's a good reputation, it's a blessing to her. And, of course, we know the Lord's reputation is a good reputation. And so when we become Christians, we're made part of the family of God. Then he went on to talk about it. He said, also, you know, the Lord takes our reputation upon him. And... That's kind of a sobering thought, isn't it? That we have the opportunity to bring blessing or to bring uh, disgrace, really, to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was just talking about the blessing that we have in Christ and that uh, the grace of God, that God gives us his reputation. That's a great thing. Revelation chapter 3, begin, beginning with verse 7, down to verse 13 and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of David he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we come before you tonight. We realize that as we come before thee, Lord, we stand upon holy ground. Uh, Father, we come to church to meet with thee. And Lord, we just pray that uh, you'll just uh, meet with us tonight. We pray that you'll meet with us each time we come to the house of God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit of God that lives in our heart and uh, comforts us and walks with us every day. Now draw us closer to you. Help us to be stronger spiritually. Lord, help us to be better witnesses for you. Help us to grow in the Lord every day. And Father, we just pray that you will use us. Pray that you'll use this church and we pray not only for this church, but Lord, for Bible-believing churches all over this country that you'll use us to win souls and to teach people the Word of God. Now we just thank you for all you do for us. We pray for souls to get saved. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach tonight on the subject of Bible-believing church. The Church of Philadelphia is one of the two churches, as we go through these seven churches in the book of Revelation, the Church of Philadelphia along with the Church of Sardis is the only two churches that the Lord did not have a rebuke for. Now I think it's important that, and that's one of the reasons I'm preaching through these seven churches. It's important for us to 
to look at the progression toward apostasy that the Bible gives us here that indicates that in the last days before the coming of Christ that many churches, in fact most churches I think, uh, will drift into liberalism and drift into apostasy. These seven churches give us uh, a picture of the end of, of, of the church, really all through the church age and down through the end of the church age. It also gives us a prophecy of how most churches will uh, drift into liberalism, as I said a moment ago, but it also gives us a picture of different churches at different times during the church age and how the Lord will work with a church that finds itself in one of these situations, in one of these conditions of these seven churches. It also gives us a great deal of hope because as we look at these two churches, Smyrna and Philadelphia, we find two great churches. And to me that says that God is going to have good churches, Bible-believing churches, right up until the time that he comes. A person may have to search for a good Bible-believing church. It may get harder to find a good Bible-believing church, but the Lord is going to have good churches, good Bible-believing churches, right up until the time that he comes. And I think that's a great blessing. I think that's a great uh, source of encouragement for us tonight. But now if we leave out Sardis and Philadelphia, we can see the trend toward apostasy of most churches in this age. And that's what I've been preaching on. Ephesus symbolizes the infiltration of religion. They had left their first love. And that's what happens when we lose our closeness to God. We begin to depend, to depend on other things. And, and, and you call that religion. Pergamos is the church of compromise. They had false doctrine. They had the doctrine of Balaam. And so they allowed false doctrine into the church. And if you follow these, uh, what I'm saying, is you can see the progression here. Thyatira is the church of, of toleration. Uh, they had allowed immorality to creep into the church. Sardis is the church of substitution. Uh, the church had a name that it lived, but it was dead. It was cold spiritually. They did not have the Holy Spirit. There were some people saved in that church. I preached about that. But most of the people in that church were not even saved. Now, as you follow that, you can see the, the, the creeping paralysis that if we allow that to happen in our churches, you can see the creeping paralysis that Satan wants to put in our churches. Religion, compromise, uh, toleration, substitution. But tonight I want to preach on the good church, Philadelphia. Today I want to preach on a Bible-believing church. First of all, a Bible-believing church believes the whole Bible. Here in verse 8, Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Then let me take you down to verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Two times in this letter, the Lord commends this church and tells them that he is blessing them because they've, they've held on to the Bible. They believe God's word. He says there in verse 9, that has kept my word. And in verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. You know, the Bible says over and over it is the word of God. Uh, thus saith the Lord. That little phrase, thus saith the Lord, is repeated in the Bible over 400 times. And someone has figured out that the Bible claims to be the word of God over 3,800 times. So God is not bashful about telling us that this book belongs to him. And God is not, he's not backwards about telling us that this book comes directly from him. All scripture is given by inspiration. That, that tells us the word inspiration means God breathed. It means God uh, used men. I hear this often. People say, well, you know, the Bible is written by men. That's not exactly true. The Bible is written by holy men of God as they, sp as they spake, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And God says this is his book. It's not man's book. God, this is God's love letter to you and 